If you've been watching over the past couple of weeks, you might remember how my ducks have been helping us think about what it means to be part of Team Jesus or in Jesus' dream team. A couple of weeks ago, I told you about how some of the ducks were fighting each other about who was the best and how the Jesus duck reminded them that we all need each other. And then last week, we looked at some of those who loved God and followed Jesus and how, we saw how they were all different, but they gave what they had and allowed God to take care of the rest. Well, this morning, I want to think a little bit more about what it means to be part of that dream team. And I want to start with two of my favourite ducks, Holmes and Watson. Sherlock Holmes is a brilliant detective, solving so many seemingly unsolvable crimes. But he doesn't do it alone. He does it with his good friend, Dr Watson. Now, Dr Watson might not be as good a detective as Holmes, but he is clever. He is trustworthy and Holmes knows that he can rely on Watson for his help. And when they stick together, they do far better together than they would apart. Don't you, lads? But I have several ducks that are part of a team and they can tell us something about what it means to be part of Team Jesus. I have my choir duck. He's got a lovely voice, a beautiful boy soprano. But he's a bit too shy to sing on camera without the rest of the choir. So you're probably glad to hear that. But when he's part of the choir, he doesn't just do what he likes. They will all have their music and he will have his part to sing. And it's only when he follows the music and sings the bit that he's told by the choir master to sing and does it when he's told to do it, that the choir makes beautiful music. If he just sang when he, what he wanted, when he wanted, the choir would make a racket. It would just be a bit rubbish and no one would want to listen to them. But when they sing together, they bring such beauty to the world. And then there's my footballer. He could be really brilliant at all the keepy-uppy stuff. He can shoot, he can tackle. But he wouldn't get very far on his own. He needs to play in the position he's told and do what the manager tells him. And if, because if all the players just went out on the pitch and all ran after the ball and they all just did what they liked, the teams would probably do really badly. But when they do what they're told, they work together as a team, they have a chance of winning. And then there's my red arrow duck. You have to be a really special pilot to be a red arrow. And they have to fly in really tight formation so that everyone is in just the right place at just the right time. And if they all decided, well, I'm a great pilot, I can do what I like. It not only would be nowhere near as impressive, it could actually be quite dangerous and there could be a terrible accident. So they have to do what they're told, when they're told. And it keeps everyone safe and makes for a really brilliant display that makes everybody go, ooh and ah. Then there's my policeman. Hello, hello, hello. And we're really blessed to have them to keep us safe. But they can only do it if they keep the law. If the policeman decides, hmm, don't like that law. I'm not going to bother with that one. They wouldn't be doing a very good job. They need to follow the laws of the land and do what they're told when they're trying to solve a crime. And when everyone is doing that, they make a better police force. Same with my soldier. This is a Roman soldier. We hear about them in the Bible. Jesus met one and he told Jesus how they work. He was a centurion and when he told someone to go somewhere, they did it. And when he said, come here, they did it. And when he said, do that, they did it. And he also had people above him giving orders. And when he was told to do something, he did it. And those of us who have never been in the army might be really amazed at how reliant on orders they are. But they know that if everyone just did whatever they wanted, when they wanted, 
The army wouldn't work. It's only when people respect the authority of their leaders and do what they're told that the army works. And it's the same with my nan. Nuns have got to live together for very long periods, devoting all their efforts to their community. And they take vows that they will follow a rule of that community. And I'm sure it's not always easy. I'm sure they think some days, oh, I really don't want to do that. And I'm sure they struggle to get on. But when they do it, that's when the community is a really happy place. We have seen over the last few weeks that we all need each other and that God's given us all different talents. And being part of Jesus' dream team means using those talents to bring Jesus glory. But we only do it when we work together. And working together means we have to listen to what Jesus says and do it. In today's reading, Jesus says those who follow him are like a family and what marks out those who are part of his family is that they listen to what God wants them to do and they do it. Jesus also said that people who were wise did that. They heard what Jesus said and did it. God didn't seek to instruct us because he likes to be the boss and order us around. He just wants us to know what is best for us. God made us and he made us to live and work together, but it only really works if we'll listen to him and do what he says. If we all just think, ah, I'll not bother, I'll do my own thing, it won't help us. And it won't help us to be a good team Jesus. It'll work as badly as my footballer saying, oh, I'm not passing to them, I'm not listening to the manager. Or the policeman thinking, oh, that's silly, I'm not following that law. Or the soldier going, orders? Nah, not following those. But being part of Jesus' dream teams means recognising we need each other and using what he's given us to follow him. But also it means listening to Jesus, doing what he says. And when we do that, we will be a dream team. We will be the team Jesus that Jesus wants us to be. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for making us part of a community. Help us to recognise we need each other and to be willing to play our part. But help us to remember that we work best when we listen to you and live as you tell us. And help us to do that. Amen.